Good morning, my name is Zan Ta and this is a screencast video on reference planes and reference lines within Revit for an end user who had some basic questions. Here I am in Revit 2016. In the recent files window, I have the ability to create new Revit families or open an existing one. If I click new, it will take me to the Imperial library of all the Revit family template files to select work off of to create a new family. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose generic model just for sake of ease. You'll see in the preview two reference planes. If I hit open, it's going to show you the floor plan reference level view. There are always two reference planes that they give you as a starting point. And the reason is because when you look at a reference plane and you select it, it will have the name of the reference planes here and here but it will also specify define origins is checked. The reason they do this is so that when two reference planes that have define origins is checked, that intersection represents the insertion point. When you look at it in a plan view, we can easily see the reference planes. These planes are long dashed lines that have two open circles that you visibly see when you select the reference plane. The reference planes go out to infinity to my left and to my right, or in this particular instance on the one that I selected goes to infinity up and to infinity down. The reference plane is coming towards my face, either this one or this one. If I uh, try to zoom out, you're not going to see elevation marker designations. Okay, A lot of people are used to seeing left, right, top, and bottom uh, elevation markers. They're already created. Those elevations are created for you. If I open up Visibility Graphics dialog box and go to Annotations, if I take a look, you will not see the Elevation Marker Annotation category to display that data. So the way to look at it is front, left, right, or back. Front is standing here looking this way. Back is here looking this way and left and right. So if I click the front elevation and go to that, um, and I zoom, do a zoom extents or zoom all, you will see a reference plane vertically. And if you select it, it'll be the center left, right. So let's go back to reference level. Select this. This says center left, right. If I go back to the front elevation, there is also a reference level that is set up for you by default. And if you select it, scroll out, and pull it out of your way like this, it will give you the context to understand this is the basically the bottom level that you're working with and there is a reference plane at the very bottom for the sake of reference and functionality if you select it you'll see it does not have a name which you can give it a name and whether it is a reference or is not a reference so it's just there for visual purposes when it says not a reference however you can go in here you can specify strong weak or a specific reference plane that's already been created. Okay. Um, what is the difference between strong and weak reference planes? Uh, a strong reference plane is when you use the align command and it will automatically see it, for example, a wall, the left side of the wall, the right side of the wall, the center of the wall. If you choose weak reference plane, then an example of that would be you have multiple lines that represent the multiple layers of a wall and you can have reference planes within each of those layers and it will um, see them only if you hit the tab key. Okay, So here we are in the front elevation and that's why you only see this one. You don't see the reference plane that's over here. This one is center front back. So if I were to go to left or right elevation, I should see, again doing zoom all, a vertical reference plane that says center front back. Okay, And so another way to just get visual understanding of what you're working with, if I go over and I create a reference plane in plan view for the left and the right, <clears throat> and I select it and I give it a name, say my left, and over here my right, if I go to the front elevation and do zoom all again, you should be able to see the one you made on the left called my left and the one on the right called my right. 
Um, coincidentally, if you go in and say, give yourself a dimension <clears throat> to the two reference planes and equalize them so that they stay equal no matter what you do, like so, again, if I go to the front elevation, I should be able to see that these reference planes have moved. My right and my left reference planes are now equally spaced. So this is the context that you need to visually understand um, as you're creating and working with creating families. And that's it. That's a quick um, screencast video on the understanding of what reference planes are. I almost forgot to mention, uh, there's also what's known as a reference line. Um, a reference line is um, a bit more different than a reference plane. A reference plane is a dashed line that has open circles on either end that go to infinity on either side. <clears throat> A reference line is a solid green line that has a definitive start and a definitive end. Uh, the circles are not open, they're solid. And the reason you have a reference line is so that you can host an object on that reference line, and that reference line will control the positioning of the object. For example, if I go in here and I put in a angular dimension, I can parameterize that angular dimension and say call it door swing. Now that I've done this, as I go in here and I change this value for the door swing to say 23 for example, it will rotate this reference line and hold that point position because that's where I drew it initially. It's aligned and locked. If not, you can use the align command to align that point and lock it so you know for sure that it's actually going to be placed on that. And again, you can go in here and you can type whatever angle you need, and it should adjust that object called a reference line. And that's it. Thank you very much.